Jingle Jingle. It's a beautiful, snowy, sleety evening here in Boston. And frankly, I can't think of a better time to voluntarily give myself a migraine. And so it is my great pleasure to present to you a brand new series. I think as it stands right now, I'm going to call it Awful Archaeology, but that name is heavily up for debate. I like alliteration. So here's what it's all about. I have this gigantic wheel, and it is entirely covered in archaeological-based conspiracy theories. It's got things you know about, like Atlantis and the Baghdad Battery, and it's got some other lesser-known stuff, like the Beartooth Highway Molar and the Castanadolo Skull. It's also got some big names in pseudo-archaeology, people like Eric Von Dannigan, and of course Graham Hancock. Now, you can probably already infer the way this works, but I'm going to spin the wheel of voluntary pain, and I'll talk about whatever it lands on. So without further ado, let's give this bad boy its inaugural spin. Oh boy. As you already had spoiled for you by the title, today we are going to be talking about the Oldway Man. In 1913, a skeleton was found in Oldway Gorge in what is now Tanzania. The complete skeleton was found embedded inside concreted sediments. But despite these remains being that of a skeletally modern Homo sapien, the depositional layer that they were found in dated them to be nearly 700,000 years old, which would have pushed back the arrival date of Homo sapiens by nearly half a million years. <laughs> Olduvai Gorge is the source of much of what we know about the evolution of early hominids. Its unique composition, as well as its location in the world, has made it one of the most important sites for those who are interested in human evolution. The depositional layers found at the site are the results of lacustrian or lake sediments which had been deposited in various bodies of water over the past two million years. But today, Olduvai Gorge is no longer a lake. It is a rift valley, and it stretches nearly 30 miles end-to-end -end and can be almost 300 feet deep. Because of this, we have a literal cross-section of the Earth. Olduvai Gorge has yielded the remains of countless species, from the bones of extinct types of wild pigs and hippos, to lions, reptiles, birds, and of course, humans. In fact, Olduvai Gorge is unique because it has a continuous span of human evolution over the past two million years, including a discovery from 1959 by Mary and Louis Leakey that was nicknamed Zinge. They would go on to name the species Zingeanthropus boisei before changing the name to everyone's favorite, Paranthropus boisei. In fact, the skull of Zinge was so complete that it went on to become the holotype for the entire species. This discovery at Olduvai Gorge also led the Leakeys to nickname P. boisei the Nutcracker Man. It is still unclear whether or not this is due to the size of his mandibles or the fact that he would look better in a tutu dancing to Tchaikovsky. As a quick side note, speaking of weird names, they actually found the first example of Hobo Habilis, Hobo, of Homo Habilis there as well, and they decided to name that specimen Twiggy uh, because his skeleton had been crushed. What a way to be remembered. And along with this, Olduvai Gorge is also home to the Olduvon tool industry, which are the first examples of tools made by hominids. But despite this site providing a wealth of consistent information, one find threw sand in the gears. The year is 1913, and German paleontologist and professor Hans Reck is conducting a dig in what was then known as Deutsch Ostafrika, or German East Africa, for those of you who speak American. While Reck was initially there to look for dinosaur bones, he was directed to the remains of a human that was found in bed two of the Olduvai Gorge. And while hominid remains would become common at the site, this one was unusual. The remains of what were almost a skeletally modern human were found in a depositional layer which also contained the remains of animals which had not walked the earth in nearly nearly two million years. I say almost skeletally modern because Rec had noticed one inconsistency between this skeleton and the mouths of you and I, and that was that this individual was in the possession of 36 teeth rather than the 32 that most of us have. Oh, damn it. I was gonna do a bit where I like take one of my wisdom teeth out because I have them around here somewhere, but I have absolutely no idea where they are, so. Oh, look, I'm funny. And this discovery led some to believe that what Reck had found was an example of a Pleistocene Homo sapien. Reck, however, was a man of science, and he knew that this was very unlikely. And so Reck began to work tirelessly to figure out why this skeleton had been found at this depositional layer. He assumed that it must have been an intentional burial, and therefore set about to look for a grave cut. However, and much to his dismay, he did not find one. Reck continued to work to learn more about the skeleton until he was interrupted by a mild inconvenience known as World World War One. But the rumors of this ancient skeleton would go on to pique the interest of one of the most important figures in the world of human evolution. None other than... In 
In 1927, Leakey visited Wreck in Munich in order to analyze the infamous Oldove skeleton which was being held there. Leakey was also under the impression that the skeleton could not possibly be anywhere near a million years old. There was one major reason for this. When a body is deposited naturally, it typically ends up coming apart. This degradation occurs from scavenging animals, flowing water, and even things like wind. Each one of these forces of nature work to take a fully articulated skeleton on the ground and scatter it all over the place. So typically, the remaining remains of a body which had suffered a natural death and was left out would be found scattered all around. But the Oldove man was fully articulated, meaning that his entire skeleton was there all in one piece, which led both the scientists to believe that it must have been buried. But again, Rex said he had found no evidence of a burial at the site. <laughs> and so, being an absolute smartass, Luki 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 decided to invite Rex back down to German East Africa in order to conduct another dig at the site. Now, of course, Rex was a paleontologist, so was he going to say no to another trip there? Probably not. I am convinced that Leakey went there purely to prove a point to wreck if no one else. Because Leakey was a stubborn son of a bitch. In fact, allegedly he made some sort of wager with Wreck that he was going to find evidence that it was a burial almost immediately upon arriving there. Let's take a little guess as to what happened almost immediately after he arrived there. Leakey found a flint axe head in close proximity to the gravesite and proceeded to spend the next several days on the dig with Wreck where they found more than 80 flint axe heads. Personally, I don't even think Leakey cared much about trying to prove whether the skeleton was 2 million years old or 20,000 years old. I just think he wanted to prove Wreck wrong. The excavation of the site also yielded important geologic evidence. He hadn't noticed that there were stones present in bed 2 that were also present in the beds above it. Some little red pebbles and fragments pieces of limestone primarily. These pieces of stone did not occur anywhere else in this layer and therefore must have been transported artificially from above it. You know, through like some sort of digging action. Uh, I don't know, spitball in here. Like digging a grave. And this confirmed that the skeleton of the old way man had been intrusive or had been deposited within a layer and not deposited on top of it. Meaning that this specimen did not adhere to the laws of stratigraphy, which would have dictated that a skeleton needed to be the same age as the layer it was in. Because that's the way digging a hole works. All of this evidence led the team to the conclusion that the the remains were probably more likely around 20,000 years old. This date pointing to the middle of the Paleolithic era would be far more likely than for a fully articulated homo sapien skeleton to be found in a middle Pleistocene bed. All right, now everyone take a quick break, clap, pat yourselves on the back because the mystery is solved. But I have one final piece I want to add before this story is over. You may be wondering why I've only shown you one picture of the old of a man. And unfortunately, that's because this is the only one that exists. And it is now that we have to talk about... The story of the Old of a Man is plagued with loss of crucial context for the find. While thankfully the mystery was solved while all of the pieces were still present, today little of the puzzle still remains. In 1916, after the outbreak of World War I, Wreck was still working in German East Africa. However, in 1916, troops from Belgium and England began to attack the German colony. In a Hail Mary attempt to preserve all of the irreplaceable information he had found on his digs, Wreck gave every single one of his field notes to a train conductor in hopes that they would make it safely to Switzerland. Knowing that there was very little chance that he was going to be able to make it out of the country with the papers, or even out of the country at all, he thought that if the papers traveled alone, there would be a slight chance that the papers would fall into good hands. Wreck himself was taken prisoner later in 1917 and was not released until the war was over. And German East Africa was divided between Belgium, Portugal, and Britain in the Treaty of Versailles. And unfortunately, after leaving German East Africa, Rex's papers were lost forever. Now, as far as the Old of a Man skeleton itself, due to it being found in what was a German colony at the time, the skeleton was stored in Munich. And because of this, the skeleton itself was mostly destroyed during bombing raids in World War II. And almost as if the entire story is cursed, the final piece of information was also lost. Rex himself spent much of his life suffering from a heart condition. And in 1937, Rex died of a heart attack at the young age of 51 years old. The only writings that remain on his time at Olduvai Gorge is his book written after World War I entitled The Ravine of Primeval Man. It's stories like this which plague the world of archaeology. Stories where irreplaceable archaeological artifacts and contexts are lost as the wheels of progress or sometimes the wheels of regress continue to grind forward. In fact, I can personally guarantee you that this won't be the last artifact in this series that has met this same fate. And while we are unable to change the events of the past, we are more than able to learn from them. And maybe, just maybe, we will be able to come together in the future, no matter the banner under which we march or the god to whom we pray, and be able to preserve these artifacts so that they can continue to teach for generations to come. I'd like to thank you all very much for watching. Again, this is a brand new series, so I would love to know what you guys think about it. A actually, wait, wait, wait. 
Let's have a little sneak peek as to what the next episode will be on. Spin that wheel, Big Jim. Wow, that's gonna be really exciting, don't you think? You should totally subscribe and hit the notification button so you can be there the second the video comes out. I'd like to thank my patrons for making this video possible. Your names will be in the credits, so stick around if you wanna see that. Remember to stay curious, stay inquisitive, and remember that the only valid excuse to stop working on something is World War One.